Hi, this is Mike from 3D Phillies, and here's a tutorial on how to create a spiralized vase using Th Fusion 360. Uh, this isn't a tutorial, however, on how to model in Fusion 360. It's just simply, if you follow the same steps, you'll be able to create a vase like this. Or a bowl similar to this type of design. So here we go. First, you need to create a new design and create a new form. Create a new sketch using the ground plane and create a circle. I'll choose 50mm diameter but it doesn't really matter too much. Then create a spline. So we'll just zoom in a little bit. Just make sure that snapping is enabled so that you're actually snapping up against the circumference of the circle. Click a few times to create a shape similar to this and then go OK. We'll always be able to change this a little, little later on but um, we need to first create the circular pattern to extend this pattern all around the circumference. So we'll select the object first then the pivot point which is the center of the circle and by default three is selected so we've got two instances of the one object to create three. We'll need to ramp that up to 70, that's probably a bit, bit too much, maybe 60, perhaps even 50. Okay we can work with that and then I'll just adjust the curves. So we'll click OK. Now we can very easily adjust these curves by clicking the actual control vertices point in the middle, not the handles, but just the point, and then simply moving it. And as you'll see, all of the instances follow, follow the one object. I'll pull this in a little bit, and yeah, I'll just leave it at that. We'll see how we go, and we'll finish the sketch. So now we'll just zoom out a little bit and then we'll start extruding. So we go to extrude, select the middle, and we've already got 5mm selected and we'll just click OK. So now this is looking good. So we've got our first extruded form, however you'll notice that the middle plane and the sketch that we created is now deleted as well, but we'll fix that later on. So from here, we have to modify in order to keep extruding up. But it's really important that we create the different bands, and you'll see why later. So click Modify. And for Selection Filter, it's really important that you select the edge. Um, otherwise, this won't work. Double click one of the edges, and you'll see that the entire edge is then selected. And we have our Control Handle. There's several things we can do with this, but I'll just show you how basically it works. So there's, in the handle, we can select this, which will rotate the Z, as you can see, which is something we will be doing. You can also increase, like, um, raise it, decrease it, and then you can scale. You can scale uniformly by holding the middle and pulling it in and out. But I'll leave that. Now there's several different ways you can model what I'm about to show you. I prefer using what I'm going to show you because it's much easier to modify things later on and also if you don't have an idea of what you want to model it makes it much easier to first start out with the with the skeleton and then modify each of the bands but you'll see what I mean as we go. Now the most important thing about following this method is that you have to select, hold down the ALT key while lifting up the up handle. Now I'll put 5mm and as you can see it's actually created another extrusion. Kept the original one but simply added a new one. If we follow it again, click mo modify, hold the ALT key and then raise the up and once again press 5 and it's created a new band. 
Now, I'll put it on fast forward so you don't have to watch me do this in slow motion and I'll stop and then we can continue on. Okay, so now this is looking fine. What we'll do is, once again, modify each of these to add some interest to it. So, in our previous examples, we had this type of wavy line for both the vase and the bowl. And the way we created that was simply to double click this line, press shift key, skip one line, double click the next one, skip that one line, double click the next one, skip this line, double click the next one, skip this line and double click this line. Now, we have to modify and then click on the Z revolve and you'll see that we have that shape. 8.5 degrees is fine, I guess. And we can click OK for that. If we want to get fancy, we can also double click this, maybe even double click this, and let's try and extrude outwards. So that's looking like some sort of flask. Um, you can always just get creative with whatever you want to do here. You can raise things, um, but I'll just undo both of these because that's not what we're trying to do. And pretty much that is the vase. Now, as we've seen before, the top and the bottom are still closed. So for 3D printing, in order to create a vase mode, we'll actually need to close this up, the top and the bottom, and then print in vase, vase or spiralized mode. Now, the easiest way to do it, and my opinion, not the best way, is double click, and then, just let me get out of that, double click, modify, and then fill hole. Now, you'll see that it, it's warped the edges. All you have to do to change that is maintain creased edge. So it's turned it into flat. However, by doing so, what that also has done is flattened out all these crevices so you no longer have these deep crevices as you'll see they'll fall, they'll come back into being a straight curve now that looks okay but it's not really what we want to do so what i'll try and do is um the better way um first i might actually add a bit of interest by closing these up a bit so i'll go modify and we'll Shrink this a little bit. That's fine. Let's go 0.8. And then I'll do the same thing for the bottom. Modify. Point 0.8. And there we go. So once we've created this, we can actually exit the form by pressing finish form and if it hasn't produced an error that's a great thing if it has you'll need to change the curve now because we've allowed it to um, maintain the creases it's got some great lines here now we also want to create a nice if we want to create a nice vase that isn't in a vase mode we can do this create a sketch on the base plane, a circle, and just big enough that it's past the size of our vase. Finish sketch, and then simply extrude. We just need to extrude it to a bit past the vase or just on the vase at this point we've actually swallowed up the vase in a cylinder but it's created two objects and that's really important the next thing we need to do is create a profile to cut out a hole so we'll create a new sketch using the side profile and then once again we'll create a spline 
you can start the spline just outside of the curve, outside of the vase, and simply follow the contour of the vase, keeping in mind that we want a base. So at this point, we'll stop it right in the center. We'll select OK, and then we'll just add some lines going from the dead center straight up 90 degrees, and then hitting this curve, creating a profile. We'll finish this sketch, and then we'll create a revolve. So that profile has already been selected, and the axes will be, turn these off, the Z axes, and it's created that. And by default, it's actually done a cut, which is exactly what we want. So now we've cut out a hole for the vase. The next thing we need to do is to split the body. Now the trick is we need to split the cylinder and the cutting tool will actually be the vase that we created. So when we select the body to cut or split it will be the, the cylinder and then we need to select the vase and then extend splitting tools. This will take some time to think and click OK. And here we go. So now we've created the vase, still in here, but we've actually got another object. So here, if I just unclick that, what we have left over is the body, which is actually the cylinder less the outer periphery. So we're left with this. You can also even hide the object because we don't need that anymore. So now we're left with this entire vase. Hope you found that useful. And if you like it, comment below. Thank you.